Hello, folks. This is Mark Silver with Heart of Business, and I'm here with my friend and colleague, Jeffrey Davis, uh, who is wearing a startlingly beautiful blue shirt, which I am admiring tremendously. It's funny, we were talking about the word admiration earlier. And um, his book, Tracking Wonder, which I'm lucky enough to have an uncorrected proof just showing off, <laughs> but um, it's, uh, I'm in the in crowd. No, it's, uh, <laughs> but... It's a, it's, I wanted to have Jeffrey on to talk about this book because um, I want you all to have this book because it is a surprisingly beautiful and poetic and playful and helpful, helpful journey um, through wonder. His business tracking wonder is um, when he first rebranded some years ago. I was like, what is he doing with that brand tracking wonder? What the heck is that? I don't even know what that is. But, um, and that's part of the, I think that's, that's part of the journey, right? I mean, and, you know, Jeffrey, I can, I, I don't have it in my head. I have his bio here. You know, he's, he works, he works with big people, small people. He works, he, he's done a lot of work with some really impressive folks. He's had a long, long career with the work that he's done. He's been incredibly effective. He's someone that I've really um, enjoyed knowing and admired his work uh, tremendously. And um, we have, you know, people from his audience that have ended up the heart of business and never heard anything, anything negative about um, our, from our clients, uh, which, you know, I wouldn't be, I, you know, naturally, naturally enough. And this book, I mean, it's, when I say that it's fun, you know, one of the things that I think gets missed a lot with books is it's not just pouring words into a, into, onto a page, but the design of it is about the experience, is how you take something in. And the fact that he's um, played with, how the book is actually structured and experienced adds to how it's received and how useful and powerful it is. And so um, I'm, there's a lot more that I can say, but I wanna jump into the, the conversation with Jeffrey. So thank you so much for being here and taking some time. I know in what is, um, you know, it is the beginning of your book launch and there is a lot that's been going on. So thanks for taking some time with us. Welcome. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for that beautiful intro and, and warm up. It's always a pleasure to just have the opportunity to hang out and talk with you. So thank you again. Mm. You are so welcome. So, you know, he talks in this book, you talk in this book, I'm talking to the audience, talking to you um, about um, these different facets of wonder. And there was one in particular, um, hope, the rainbow facet, which is how you refer to it. And um, it, uh, you know, we were talking a little bit beforehand as one does. And um, it probably, I, I, you're right, it would be useful for you to kind of give the framework for folks to understand what, you know, about the facets and the young genius. And anyway, I'd, I'd love to hear it from you. I'm sure people would. Thank you so much. Yes, let's let's dive into hope a bit here. So just to put it in context, the, the subtitle of the book is Reclaiming a Life of Meaning and Possibility in a World Obsessed with Productivity. So I was raised in, I live in and swim in and sometimes have perpetuated that world obsessed with productivity. And so um, I'm very happy with this book, it kind of synthesizes over 15 years of deliberately researching, um, um, experimenting with and applying much of the science of wonder, the um, dimensions of wonder and the wisdom traditions and in Tracking Wonder's living laboratory and in my own living laboratory in life. So in the book, I lay out six facets of wonder, if you, as you alluded to, and I define wonder this way in a very accessible way. I could say it's an astonishment of the soul. I could say it's um, the first of all human emotions, but as an mm -hmm. entry point, kind of a plain language entry point, I will um, define wonder as a heightened state of awareness that's brought about by something unexpected, 
that either delights us or disorients us or both, All right? So we can kind of start there. What's beautiful about recalling these experiences of wonder, sharing these experiences of wonder, even fostering these experiences of wonder, we can up our wonder ratio in these experiences momentarily, a fleeting moment, and dissolve our biased perceptions so we can see again what's real and true, what's beautiful and possible. And that could mean you see again yourself and your true nature. It can mean you see again other people, strangers, people you become overly familiarized with whose sentences you think you can complete. <laughs> it means seeing again the beautiful world of the 10,000 things right around us or your sense of what's real and true. Okay, so we kind of start with that. Six facets of wonder. So imagine wonder as being this multi-sided, this multifaceted gem that shines in so many different ways. So I wanted to give us all a shared language of possibility by giving you these six facets, openness and curiosity that can really, if you keep fostering these two together on an ongoing basis, help you approach life's unbidden surprises and the other surprises with more creativity than reactivity. The third pair, and then I'll come back to hope, the third pair are connection and admiration. These are the relational social dimensions of wonder that we often don't think of, but connection is the flock facet and um, admiration is the mirror facet. In the middle that you've alluded to, two really important facets that many people definitely don't associate with wonder. One is bewilderment. It is the deep woods facet that we can feel when we are bewildered with the evolution and changing nature of our own identity, or when we're in the middle of a new endeavor, a new business, a new venture. And then there's hope, the rainbow facet. So bewilderment and hope can help us navigate uncertainty, navigate adversity with more resilience without hardening up, more grit without grit of teeth, yeah. So hope, yeah. Um, Let's get into hope. Wait, how, yeah, how thank, hope. and thank you, yeah. thank you for framing all of that because it really helps to breathe life into it. And I was drawn to talk with you. I mean, we could talk about all of this for hours, but I was drawn in particular to the hope facet because it struck me. It's like, oh, so interesting to find it in the book, in your book here, because um, my sheikh. Um, uh, my Sufi Sheikh, uh, who passed some years ago, he always talked about hope as a medicine. And because he was also known for doing physical healing as well as um, spiritual healing and other kinds of things, and I was trained in business healing um, in that lineage, like like that wasn't it wasn't meant metaphorically. It was meant mm -hmm. like hope is an actual is a medicine, and when I look at the world around us, you know, the, all of the disastrous things that have been befalling us that we, and I say befalling us, it's not passive. We've done it to ourselves, much of it um, as human beings. And much of it has been the result of this relentless drive towards productivity, right? It's like global capitalism, you know, that has driven white supremacy and colonialism that has wreaked havoc on the planet and cultures and et cetera, and has stolen hope from so many people. And I'm just, I'm just curious about your take on this, especially when, you know, for our audience, so many people are really trying to make a difference in the world. And many of us are you know, like we're dealing with micro-sized businesses that are like a little punt in the storm, you know, a little rowboat in the storm. And um, I'm just so curious, like what you, how you talk about hope, because I know that, and obviously from the book, but I know that there, you know, it's, it can be such a um, greeting card kind of uh, thing when I, when there's something much more profound here. And I'm, Anyway, yeah, 
that's the angle I'm coming from this. And I'm okay. so curious to hear what's in your heart around it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot there. I'm going to take in some different points there. Yeah. So I'll just say personally too, when I, part of where I think I'm lit up and offer, well, actually, before I say that, let me say, I'm grateful that we share a common language because at my team huddle this morning, I said, you know, we've had amazing response to the book. We delivered a five hour wonder lab. We have a really important message and medicine here. And, and the book is really a dispenser of medicine. It's the way we frame it actually. So I love uh, that your teacher uses that language too. It's a language of reality. So in fact, all six of these facets are emotions of possibility, all of which are genuine medicine showing measurable physiological benefits and some benefits that are just as quote healthy for us as good sleep, right? As good diet and so forth. So yes, I completely honor your teacher's language around that. So hope, um, I admittedly, um, before I really dove into the science of hope and literature of hope, I had my own bias against this, but then I started getting collecting. I had this bias because I, I thought of it as kind of wishful thinking. Like, oh, I hope you're okay. <laughs> you know, I hope things turn out well, right? This is kind of the way we throw that word around, right? And so right. it's just kind of like, right. I hope, but I'm not going to take any action on it. Um, so I did have that, that sort of uh, association with it. The more I dove into it, coupled with the more I was recognizing how many of our clients and community members go through such suffering, uh, uh, ramp at so, sort of what I call sometimes a tornado moment where one personal adversity after another arise just as they're showing up for their most impactful work. Couple that with what we've experienced globally, not just the past two years, because I think we know that the past two years have simply exposed what's been problematic with so many of our institutions, also as well as just our own habits, right? Because we've been swimming um, in this culture for a while. So then I dove into the science of hope to really, I define it as a very proactive way of staying buoyant during times of adversity so that you can move in incrementally toward a better near future. Mm. So I, um, there are a few, maybe there are a few takeaways from that chapter, just given our time here that I could share with you. Certainly could go into some of the stories. I share a story uh, for your listeners so they know about Nick Cave, Australia, Australia's most renowned musician. He's so multifaceted and how he maintains and ultimately recenters himself toward a sense of wonder. He says, after he lost his 15 year old son to a tragic accident, um, he said he had to get a center back, which he said really for him, probably most creative people, if not all human beings, the center is a sense of wonder. I tell his story, I tell another uh, remarkable business owner's story from our own community and, and others. Here are some of the takeaways that might help your listeners. Um, one is that what I found in my own experience and my research and interviews is that people who keep, keep going without burning out, people who stay emotionally buoyant, use the, uh, the rowboat right on the stormy ship, who stay buoyant without drowning and going under, um, they check some of their own default notions of reality. Some of those default notions of reality are succumbing to cynicism, which is a default state. It's easy, I think, to default to cynicism at any time, not just this time. So they check that default state, like, huh, there's that pattern. I'm not gonna just like question all human motives <laughs> and all sense of possibility. So they check that default state, but then they also do something really remarkable they will set their sight on a near term possible goal. If you feel like you are, if you are literally drowning in rocky waters, you set your sight, right? You're like, okay, I just need to get to that log to keep me buoyant. 
that is setting your sight sometimes on just a near-term goal. So you kind of, if you're in a moment of adversity or you're feeling like the world is overwhelming you, you set yourself on a near-term goal, three weeks, six weeks, very concretely. The other thing that people who stay buoyant do is surround themselves with other people who are actually hopeful. We know we're relational social beings, right? So just noticing the energy you're surrounding yourself with. It's one thing to be skeptical and questioning of the status quo, which is definitely where we want to track wonder. It's another thing to just be cynical and defeatist and feel like there's nothing we can do to really make change with our small business. So surround yourself with genuinely hopeful people who are also proactive to help support you and keep you buoyant. The other thing though, and this is where uh, two, two other things come in where, where part of the wonder comes in. So default sense of what is real can often mm -hmm. be very narrow and default. And our peripheral vision sometimes literally can shut down. We're just seeing right. this. So actually what I found, and, and I give a number of stories of this, is that people sometimes in adversity, crisis, or they feel like the world's crashing down on them, will be open to surprising moments of beauty. In my own case, as I tell in chapter one in uh, Flames, everything you see behind me went up in flames. Just almost within a year of my wife Hillary and I buying this farmhouse in Hudson Valley, getting married, went up in flames from freak lightning accident. Um, came back the next day to examine the char. I'm so shutting down. I'm mad, but I don't know what I'm mad at. I'm, I want to cry. I can't find the tears. And out of the corner of my eye, I see through one of the holes the firefighters had knocked through the walls, this beautiful monarch that had come in. It's like and everything for a moment, fleeting moment dissolved. It was unexpectedly delightful, dazzling opened me, gave me just enough of a winged hope to keep moving forward. So keeping open to small beauties is really a way to stay hopeful and buoyant. The other thing is to really deliberately daydream constructively toward that near future. So those are just a few of yeah. the really important, I hope, takeaways that your, your listeners come away. Well, well, it strikes me what you're saying. Um, you know, going back to what you were saying about cynicism, and this is something that I like to talk about too, and I love the way that you frame it um, and talk about it because like being certain, whether you're certain in the positive or certain in the negative, isn't really that helpful <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and it's rarely, it's always a sign to me that something's up. <laughs> it's so, it's so, um, yeah, you're, you're stuck. And yet I see people trying to like, like, I think they mistake hope for certainty. Mm. And so it's like, things are terrible. And that's like, oh, I've got to switch to things are wonderful. Mm. And both, neither of those are true, right? Oh, I love this. It's Not, so neither, yes. neither of these are 100% true. And so what you're talking about with hope is, and as a facet of wonder is the curiosity and the openness, like things could be better. Things might be different there might be something and to be in that lack of like if you don't know then there's all kinds of possibilities that come in and the way that you talk about it feels very um soothing and inspiring you know ener energizing you know yes. it's uh something yeah. that um i really really appreciate in oh, what I, you were I, talking about here i love what you said about both certainties may be false. Yeah, um, <laughs> it is so true, right? Wonder puts us in this weird liminal space between knowing and unknowing. Mm -hmm. Always challenging what we think we know, right? Mm -hmm. So right. I really appreciate this. This is not wishful thinking. It's not positive thinking. It's not mm -hmm. just like, oh, let's just wish things were better. So there right. is that important piece of the social dimension, deliberately daydreaming, like really imagining the next possible future, and then taking incremental steps, even creative incremental steps have been right. really important. Yeah, we just advised somebody in one of our inner circles 
after some tornado moments, not to do anything for 10 days, except go to her sick bed with all of her markers and uh, pads. And I uh, gave her some prompts. And she, that was part of her deliberate daydreaming that had led to some rather profound insights, relationship, business, et cetera. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's, have to... <laughs> That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. Hmm. And I think that this is what I want for our audience is to embrace the hope to, you know, this tracking wonder metaphor that you use. I don't think it's even that metaphorical. <laughs> um, uh, that our businesses are moving something forward in the world and we don't know exactly what, and we can have some glimpses and imaginings of it and some hope that we're working towards something really, really beautiful. I was just struck, you know, by um, just, I mean, even just the flooding in British Columbia recently that mm -hmm. so struck me. I have so many people I love in that part of the world. Mm -hmm. And um and I also noticed that um, if I only donate or give to rescue efforts, which should be given to and should be supported, and I, you know, do support and want, you know, it's it's an important part. But if that's the only way that I respond, and I I need to also give to the beauty in the world. I also need to give to things that give hope mm -hmm. that where people are working in hope mm -hmm. and tracking wonder, tracking mm -hmm. possibilities. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I gave to a filmmaker storyteller and this was after, like I had purchased uh, something that helps me with my woodworking hobby because it's a way that I express, one way I express creativity and artistry mm -hmm. and then it wasn't balanced. I'm like, oh, I wanna give to somebody else's artistry in the same way. And so I just, I just appreciate I think what I appreciate so much about this book is that it puts really solid ground under our feet in the journey towards these kind of unknown possibilities that I think can be really hard to get our arms around. And without getting our arms around the images that we are presented with in this world seem so much more real when in fact the ground beneath us and this what we're moving towards is much has much more of a capital r reality to it and i just really appreciate your that you're doing this work in the world thank you thank you thank you so much it really is like wonder is at the core of who we are as human beings and yeah. so i just thank you for bringing that forward yeah I like I said we could go on for hours um <laughs> but um we probably couldn't I know that we both have had very busy <laughs> lives <laughs> but um is there anything that you want to add on before we wrap up I, I don't know I think you know I'm just imagining who's on the other end of this this conversation um and what I hope is uh for this book as as uh, as a container of medicine is that the book really does become a guide an ongoing active living guide for people through navigating uncertainty to really recognizing something within themselves that's different that is their own genius as we call it your young genius um, that they can bring forward with any set of challenges that come their way right the whole premise of the book one of the premises of the book is that every big idea begets a series of challenges, whether it's building a business or trying to change something for the better within your community, that's a big idea. The difference is how can we face and finesse those challenges day in, day out, not alone, but together. And I really hope the book provides some guidance to that. And it does, it does. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. I so appreciate you spending this little bit of time with me, with us. And um, I keep looking down at the book. <laughs> I'll show you the book <laughs> instead of just staring at it off screen. Um, Tracking Wonder, Jeffrey Davis. There's a link in the description. And um, I just, uh, 
It's a book, people. It's not a programmer. It's like, go get the, it's a book. Get the book. Um, it's not a big I ask. think you, you can get, you can get the first chapter too at our website at crackingwonder.com. Just want to get a flavor for it. Get the chapter. It. Get and the then, chapter. And then, the and then gift wonder. We didn't talk about gifting wonder, but there is a beautiful mm. thing as a business owner of recognizing mm. that you can gift wonder. What better way to gift wonder, right? Mm, what? Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you. Bless you, Jeffrey. And you, um, Lord. thank you. You're so welcome. All right, good people, beloveds, take care, peace and love, and blessings upon you and your business. <laughs>